Hey, what's going on guys? This is ETA Prime back here again. Today I am back with the NVIDIA Shield Android TV and I want to show you how to run retro games on your Shield. We're going to be using RetroArch. Before we get started, this is the 2015 model. It is the same exact hardware as the 2017. I spoke with the representative of NVIDIA just to make sure the new 2017 model uses the same CPU and Maxwell GPU. So if you have an old one, unless you really need Google Assistant, then there's really no reason to upgrade. Let's go ahead and get started. First up, we're gonna launch Google Play. From here, we're just gonna search RetroArch. And it's right here. We're gonna install it. Just let it install. Now that it's finished installing, you can launch it from there or we can just go back to the main menu and launch RetroArch. And now you're running RetroArch. So your NVIDIA Shield TV controller should automatically work in here. If it doesn't, I don't know what to do because I've never had that trouble. Try reinstalling it, possibly. It should work automatically. First thing we need to do is go to Online Updater. So I definitely suggest updating the core info files. Update the databases. And update auto config profiles. You can update everything if you'd like, but don't go through clicking them because it might freeze up. It has to download them and extract them, and sometimes RetroArch gets a little bit confused. So from here, we don't have any emulators installed, and we don't have any games yet. In this video, I'm going to go over just a few basics. We're going to go over SNES, Genesis. We're also going to do Neo Geo. You could install Chrome. You can sideload Chrome onto your NVIDIA Shield and download everything you want. But I'm going to be moving to my PC. I have a USB stick that I'm going to run all of my games from. This will work with a hard drive, an SD card, a USB stick. It's just so much simpler to transfer them from your PC to a USB and run them on the shield. Let's move over to the PC now. All right guys, so in this video we're only gonna be needing one BIOS. I'm gonna leave this down below. If you wanna try any of these other emulators, they will require BIOSes, but this tells you exactly which BIOS to get and it tells you the MD5 checksum over here. I'll be explaining this more in the next video, but for now we just wanna go ahead and get a few emulators running and set it up for you. As soon as you get used to the controls and navigating RetroArch, we'll move over and grab PlayStation, Dreamcast, and stuff like that. All right, so now let's get started putting ROMs on our USB drive. I cannot, I will not leave links to downloadable ROMs in the description, but if you search Google for whatever system you want, let's just say Super Nintendo. If you go to Google, in the search bar, type in Super Nintendo ROM set or Super Nintendo ROMs, you will come across something. Another great resource is EMU Paradise. There is a lot of awesome information over there. On the left hand side, I have my ROMs that I've downloaded. On my right hand side, I have my 32 gigabyte USB stick that I'm going to be loading my ROMs from on the NVIDIA Shield. I'm just going to right click. I'm going to go to format. I'm going to format this NTFS. Start. Yes. Format is complete. OK. Let me go ahead and open this back up. USB stick formatted NTFS or FAT32. I just wanted to go with NTFS. Over here, I could either drag and drop my ROMs, but I don't want this many. I have so many in here. I'm going to create a folder and we're going to keep very organized here on the USB stick. So my first one's going to be SNES. My next one's going to be Neo Geo. And I'm also going to do Mega Drive. Now in the States, the Mega Drive is the Sega Genesis. So I'm going to open up that SNES folder that I created. 
and find my SNES ROMs. So I have a ton of them as you can see. We're just going to grab a few of them here. And this is in no particular order. I'm just grabbing random ROMs over here. Ooh, that was a good one. Another good one. Okay, so I now have some ROMs on my USB stick. I'm going to go back. We're going to continue this same method. Neo Geo. Now, Neo Geo requires a BIOS. If you search Google for Neo Geo dot zip BIOS, one of the first three results is going to be what you need. Like I said, EMU Paradise has a lot of good information. So I'm going to find my Neo Geo games. Before I do anything, I just want to find my Neo Geo dot zip. And that is going to be right here. It's 1.6 megabytes. Drag it to my USB. Now I can grab some games. This is just random again. That's a lot of King of Fighters. We'll do some Metal Slug. We'll do number five. And there's a lot of great games here. So there's three Neo Geo games and my Neo Geo BIOS. Let it all finish transferring to the USB stick. I'm going to go back. And now I'm going to find my Genesis games. So Mega Drive is the same thing as Genesis. Mega Drive. And I'll just randomly select a few of these games here. Nothing good. I was never really into Genesis. There are some really good games on there, though. And the one game I want is Altered Beast, which is right here. Now we have a USB stick, Mega Drive, Neo Geo, SNES. We're going to be moving back to the NVIDIA Shield. We're going to place the USB stick in one of the free USB ports. And we'll launch RetroArch. I'll show you how to load the games in there and add artwork. Let's move over there now. Okay, so I'm going to insert my USB stick with my ROMs into the shield now. USB drive connected. You can browse, set up as device storage, or eject. I'm gonna press back. I don't wanna do any of that. Launch RetroArch. Now from here, we need to download cores. Since we just loaded up SNES, Neo Geo, and Sega Genesis, we need to find those three cores. Online Updater, Core Updater. There are several cores to choose from for each system that you want to play. For Neo Geo, I use Arcade FB Alpha. Download, it's going to extract. We're going to scroll down and find our Genesis my favorite one here is Sega MS, GG, MD, CD, Genesis Plus GX. Download. And finally, we're going to need SNES. As you can see, there are tons of them. I really love SNES 9X. There's another version, SNES 9X 2010, but I've always stuck with the SNES 9X. Extracting. Now I recommend quitting RetroArch after we do that one time. And now we can just relaunch it. We're going to scroll over to scan directory. Storage. And you'll see a number like this. This is your USB stick. Mine is a weird number here. Yours is probably going to be a weird number also. As you can see, SNES, Neo Geo, Mega Drive. Android also created some folders on here that we're not going to mess with. First thing we're going to do is load the SNES games. Scan directory. Scanning is finished. Then Neo Geo. Scan this directory. Give it a little bit of time because it looks inside of the zip games. You do not want to ever unzip a Neo Geo game. It will not work. Now we need to scan our Mega Drive or Genesis folder. Scan this directory. We back out. And as you can see, on our menu now, we have FBA, which is going to be our Neo Geo games. Those are the games I loaded up. 
SNES, and Genesis. Now, for some reason, I didn't find my other ones. Um, hopefully, I transferred them over. If it doesn't, you might want to unzip the games. But this is fine for right now. Now, if we want artwork for these, it's very easy to do. We're going to scroll back over to Online Updater. Thumbnails Updater. And we're going to find the corresponding system. So I want the FBA. That's a big one, so I'm not going to do that right now because it takes a long time to download. I will find SNES right here. Now it's going to download it. At the bottom, you can see 0% downloading. It will take a while to download and extract. It's downloading all of our images for every ROM made for the SNES. So while that's downloading, we can change a few things in here. Let's go to Input, Menu, Toggle, Gamepad, Combo. Now this is important. When you start a game, the only way to get back to RetroArch is setting this up. Now I always choose L3 and R3. You will just push down on your analog sticks, press both of them at the same time, it will exit the game and come back to RetroArch. It'll only pause the game so you can continue if you like to. Next thing we're going to change is the way these icons look. So we'll go to Settings, scroll down to User Interface, Menu. You can change your menu theme. Now there's a few themes built in, and I kind of like the retroactive. There's also a flat UI or pixel. And they've added more, actually. So I'm going to go with the retroactive. You can also change the shader pipeline. So if I press that, you can see how it changes in the background. And we can also change the color of the menu. Now there's many other settings we can do. We can set a background image, and I'll explain that more in another video. I'm going to stay with electric blue. and we're going to exit RetroArch. Launch it back up, and my icons have changed. Now I like the way this looks. You're gonna have to wait a while for the images to download. It takes a long time. So I suggest downloading the Genesis SNES at the same time, go do something else, come back, your images or box art will show up beside the game. For now, it's going to take me 30, 40 minutes to download that. So I'm just gonna get onto a little bit of gameplay here. Let's go ahead and start an SNES game. I'll go with my favorite, Joe and Mac, run. And we're gonna use that SNES 9X core. Run. Just go with one player here. And it runs really well. If you want to exit, if you set up your menu gamepad combo, press your analog sticks in. And you can change settings from here if you like. We got options. There are a ton of options to choose from. Controls. Right now, I'm just going to resume the game. And it definitely runs at full speed. SNES is going to run at full speed on the NVIDIA Shield. Most every emulator that I've tested runs at full speed. And if you want to check out how to set up Dolphin, I have a video and I'll leave a link in the description. I've managed to get 50 to 60 FPS with Dolphin. Most of the GameCube games run very well. Let's back out of here. We can close this game. Now we can move to Genesis. So I'll go with Rocky and Bullwinkle. Sorry, I did put more games on there, but obviously they didn't show up. This is definitely not the game I wanted to play. This is actually a fun game. I remember renting this when I was younger. So we'll back out of here. Close application. 
and I will run Metal Slug 5. You'll get this green screen, that's the BIOS booting up, the Neo Geo BIOS. Insert a coin will be select on your controller. So select to insert some coins, press start. Like I was saying, most everything runs really well. PlayStation 1, Dreamcast runs okay, but it's not due to the performance of the shield. It's due to the emulator not being optimized. So that's it for now, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you want to see more of this, let me know. I'm not sure how many people are going to be running this on their NVIDIA Shield. I love RetroArch. The menu is beautiful, and everything works very well. So I can do more videos on this. We could go over running PlayStation, Dreamcast, even though a lot of the games don't work good. We can still work on that. And whatever you want to see, just let me know in the comments. And like always, thanks for watching.